The next thing we're going to look at with the X3 is in the area of the business partner management. And we're going to take a look at the concept of leads and prospects. Um, if you were to uh, take a look at um, kind of this concept, the leads are kind of your initial point of contact with a customer. So it might be a matter of um, you meeting a particular customer at a trade show. Um, in X3, you can record that interaction as a lead. Then as things develop with that lead, you can go through the process of a conversion to a prospect. Um, once the prospect record is created, then um, X3 enables you to issue quotes uh, to the prospect to set up price books uh, for the prospect. Then at the point in time in which you're ready to conduct business and enter in a sales order, um, that prospect in part can be converted over to a customer. So let's take a look at that starting off with the creation of a lead. So under your common data menu, if you go to your BPs block, then right in the center here we're going to go to leads. So uh, here's an example of a lead being set up within the system. Um, one important thing to know, whenever you're creating a new uh, lead or really for any new record within X3, it's important to remember to come over and click on this new button in the upper right hand corner um, to tell X3 that you're creating a new item. So um, for the leads, uh, when you create it, they're going to be assigned a lead number and this is going to be something automatically generated by the system. Uh, you have a title reference here. Uh, the person's last name and first name you can record. Uh, here in the supervisor's uh, block here, this enables you to specify the sales rep that's responsible for the lead. If you click on this magnifier list or icon here, this will give you a register of all the sales reps set up within X3. Um, we have a status over here. Uh, so uh, if your organization has a process by which um, the lead is reviewed uh, to determine as to whether or not uh, the group really wants to conduct business with them. Um, you can set the lead up initially uh, with an on hold status. Then once the lead is uh, qualified or approved, uh, you could flag, you could flip that over to qualified. Or if it's so determined that the group doesn't want to do business with the lead, it can be flagged as disqualified. Okay. Uh, we have an indicator here of the uh, measure of interest that the lead has with your group. Down here um, we have a professional uh, tab. Uh, in this section right here, this is where uh, you can record the uh, leads, uh, the company that they work for, uh, the country in which they're located. Here in the function block, uh, you can specify that the role that um, the per individual has within their organization. Um, this is a user defined list here so if you need uh, options over and above this those can be easily set up with an X3. Um, we have a role and department block here. Uh, both uh, the role is a another user defined list that you can set up the department blocks uh, freeform. You have a block here for the uh, date of first contact within the individual. Um, if you have the uh, person's, uh, their organization's federal tax ID number and SIC code, they can be recorded herein. Um, if the group does anything from like a marketing perspective of recording the uh, business segment that uh, the lead is uh, working for, and uh, how uh, the lead came about to the organization. Both these business segments and sources can be set up um, with all the options that's applicable for your group. Here on your addresses tab, this is where you can specify the address information for the lead. Okay, um, so this is their main address, uh, name of the company, you know, address, postal code. Once the postal code is specified, the city and state will auto populate for you. Then down here at the bottom, you have a section here also to specify uh, phone and email addresses. Over here on the personal tab, 
if you uh, if this individual if you had their uh, personal information relative to birth date home address home telephone home e email uh, those features can all be defined herein on the personal tab uh, then we also have uh, a notes tab here where um, you know notes that are applicable to the lead can be recorded okay so once the lead is created um, there is some uh, linkages uh, on the lead uh, to some of the CRM uh, functionality within X3. Uh, to find that, if you come down in this action section here, you, you have um, a way of recording appointments, calls, and tasks associated with the lead. So if it's something that you want to plan to carry out at a future date, you can set it up as such. If it's something you just want to save, maybe it's an appointment that's already carried out, you can come down under this block. So to go to that, I, uh, just by way of example, I could click on appointment here. Okay. Then this brings me in and over here my left list here are my appointments to carry out. I can come down to my appointments carried out. So these are the ones that we've already conducted. So here's an exam example of an appointment record that we set up for the lead. So you can specify the selling site that uh, the individual works at. Um, you got the date of the appointment, whether it's a full day appointment or over what time you're going to be um, carrying out the appointment. You got the goal that can be uh, recorded. So maybe the goal of this appointment is to meet the purchasing manager or to secure a contract. Here's a block where you can indicate uh, the contacts that you're going to be visiting. Here on the employees tab, this is where one can come to specify uh, what employees within your organization is going to be at the appointment. So in this case, the primary sales rep would be there. But if there's other members of the organization that are required for the appointment, one can uh, come in here and uh, indicate them here in. And there's a whole uh, CRM calendar within X3 uh, that can be utilized. So, uh, you know, this individual could see that he's required for an appointment. Here on the locations tab, this is where uh, you can specify if this appointment's at the customer's premises or if it's, you know, at site at your company. Over on the resources tab, um, uh, you can set up different types of resources uh, within X3. So uh, maybe you, you need a uh, overhead projector. Um, you could set that up as a resource and reserve it for this appointment. Then finally here we have a reports tab where one can come in and specify the results of the meeting as well as the relative uh, measure of satisfaction. Okay. So that's uh, just one example of what you can do um, with a lead once it's established within the system. So now if we were interested in converting this lead into a prospect or a customer, what you'll notice over here on the right hand in the right list, we have a prospect and a customer button. Now, both of these are deactivated right now, and that's by virtue of the status being set to on hold. If I was to come over here and flip that over to qualified, I'm going to come and save my record. And now um, these buttons are now active. So now I could take the next step in converting the lead over to a prospect or I could just go straight away and convert the lead into a customer. Let me go ahead and create it into, or convert it into a prospect first. So we go ahead and click on the prospect button. And this is going to take us through the conversion routine. And again, the prospect is going to give you a little bit more functionality than what the lead is going to give you. Um, you know, with the prospect, like we mentioned, the uh, a sales price book can be established for them, and quotes can be issued. Okay, so here we are. We're over on the prospect record. So in here, I can go ahead and 
uh, specify uh, a category associated with the prospect. Okay. I can give it uh, here on the identity tab. I have all my legal information name here in the country block. I'm going to say these are within the United States. Again, my tax ID number, my SIC code can be specified. The currency that I want to conduct, uh, you know, do business with this individual. Here on my addresses tab, all that address information from the lead is going to flow over to the address on the prospect. Here on the management tab, I have an active flag for my prospect. Okay. Um, if I did anything by way of commissions and so forth, reporting, uh, within X3 you can set up different um, commission structures and you can have different commissions depending upon different categories of customers. Okay. Here in the sales rep, I can assign a primary and secondary uh, sales rep to the uh, prospect. And these are going to be the individuals uh, responsible for managing the account. My uh, CRM information regarding the business segment and marketing source will flow over. Um, here on the prospect, I also have this concept of statistical groups. Uh, these stack groups are, um, each one of these are user-defined lists. And um, the way that they can be used is just to further kind of segment our um, prospect and ultimately our customer uh, pools. So, you know, in this case, my group one here, I might come in and indicate that, um, you know, this is a wholesaler. You know, in group two, I might have, and these are wholesalers of, um, you know, these different categories here. Okay. Uh, group three here, it will carry a different meaning, you know looks like a geographic uh, location so I'll say they're within the Americas and finally over here on the contacts tab um, all my contact information for my lead again is going to carry over so once I have that all set up I can come over and click on the create button okay it's saying here that this user is our, already exists please confirm it And now I have a new prospect within the system. Okay.